These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Well, what's the name for this type of functional group? Carboxylic acid. Yeah, this is a carboxylic acid. The key point is it's got a carbonyl connected to a hydroxy group. Carbonyl connected to the hydroxy group is what makes this a carboxylic acid. Now, this should not be thought of as an alcohol. This is not an alcohol, even though it has an OH. An alcohol um, is not when we have an OH on a carbonyl carbon. So even though it looks a little like an alcohol, it's not an alcohol. Um, it's a carboxylic acid. You might call this a hydroxy group, but you wouldn't want to call it an alcohol group. It's just part of the carboxylic acid. Just as a technicality, normally this R would be a carbon chain, but it's possible it could just be a hydrogen. Is it possible that there can be a hydrogen and then a derivative of it with a Cl? Because I'm not, like, he said that there would be. I'm not sure. You mean like this? Yeah. Wouldn't it be so, like... Now, this wouldn't be a carboxylic acid anymore. Well, it'd be a derivative of it. Yeah, it would be a carboxylic acid derivative. Yeah, this is possible. I'm not sure. Uh, there, there might be some of these that, that um, you could draw that might not be stable or formable in real life. I don't know which of these you can actually form in, in real life. Um, but theoretically, this would be a carboxylic acid derivative. Okay. That's right. Uh, I don't remember actually ever seeing a, a problem about something that looks like this. So this might not be something that you can actually form in real life. But this is certainly something that you can't form. Uh, so what would be a good name for this? Just to do a little brief nomenclature. Well, how many carbons does this have? One. And what's the root for one carbon? Four. That's the, carbon, that's the common root. Okay. What's the IUPAC root for one carbon? Formic acid. Yeah, this would be the common name for this, formic acid. Good, and this is the name that's usually used. So we saw previously that form is the common root for one carbon. However, let's go back for a second. What's the IUPAC root for one carbon? For meth. example, there you go, meth. So what would be the IUPAC name for this? Methanoic yeah. acid. Right. The IUPAC suffix for carboxylic acids is oic acid. The IUPAC suffix for carboxylic acids is oic acid. You can see the common name looks a little bit different from that. But it's got form, which is the usual common root for a single carbon. So even though this looks a little bit different from a normal carboxylic acid, it's still considered a carboxylic acid. But the other carboxylic acids would have carbon chains here attached to the carbonyl group. So usually we have something that looks like this. Now, why are these called acids? Well, what do acids do? What's the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid? They proton. Yeah, that means they lose their proton. They give their proton to something else. Who's the proton that they're going to lose? This hydroxy proton. Sorry, I interrupted you. But yeah, it's going to be this hydroxy proton over here. We could say this proton is acidic. That's why these are called carboxylic acids. Now, here, what type of functional group is this? Alcohol. Yeah, an alcohol. This is a hydroxy that is in an alcohol. Alcohols are not very acidic. Certainly, they're far less acidic than carboxylic acids. That is, this proton is much harder to take away. Well, a good test question would be to explain. Why is it so much easier to take away this proton than this one? So how can we explain why it's easy to take this proton and not easy to take this proton? Why is it? How can we explain why this is more acidic than this? Because that one can be stabilized through uh, resonance with the O minus, while this one would just have an O minus by itself. That's an excellent answer. Yeah, very good. So I was saying before that most students never use resonance on their own to explain things, so it's really good that you're getting into the habit of trying to use resonance as an explanation. So that's exactly right. 
And the other thing that was very good about that explanation is that you remembered the way you figure out whether something's a good acid or not is to think about what would it look like after it loses the proton. We can't stare at these and figure out whether they're good acids. We have to deprotonate them and ask how stable they are. The, 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 the technical way is that we have to look at the conjugate bases. We have to look at how stable the conjugate bases are. So let's draw what the conjugate bases for these are, and then let's try, try to show how one of them is stabilized by resonance. So let's imagine that there's some base in the mix that might take a proton. And let's draw what these would look like after they deprotonated. So after these D's protonated, here's what they would look like. These are the conjugate bases of the original molecules. Now, neither of these is really that happy because they've got charges. We know that nature doesn't like charges. But who is happier? Well, anything we can do to spread out the charge is going to make it happier. This charge is stuck on this oxygen. But there's another resonance form. There's another resonance form where this charge moves on to a different oxygen. So really, each of these oxygens only has to bear half of the charge. It's like we have a, a hot potato. Which would you rather do, hold a hot potato in one hand or be able to keep tossing it back and forth between two hands? That's a rough analogy because we know that the charge isn't really moving back and forth. But the point is, this oxygen only has to bear about half of the charge, and this oxygen only has to have, bear about half of the charge. Whereas in the alcohol, this oxygen has to bear the whole charge. So this is very unhappy, so this probably wouldn't have happened in the first place. Probably it wouldn't have given up the proton in the first place. Notice there's a kind of backward logic when you're doing these acid problems. To figure out whether the molecule is willing to lose the proton, you have to ask what would happen if it did lose the proton and see whether it's happy with that. So you have to get used to that logic. So in many cases, so this would only work with a very strong base that's very eager to take this proton away. But this would work with a much milder base because it's much easier to take this proton because the negative charge is stabilized. So we saw a bunch of important lessons here. One very important lesson is if you're asked to rank things in order of acidity, which is a common type of question here, you have to ask, what does it look like after it loses the proton? You can't just stare at the original acid. You have to look like, ask, what would it look like after it deprotonates? What does the conjugate base look like? And you have to ask, is there anything that can stabilize that conjugate base? Something is particularly acidic if its conjugate base is stabilized. A molecule is acidic if its conjugate base would be stabilized. And a molecule is not very acidic if its conjugate base would not be very stabilized. And the other very important thing that you did is that you used a resonance argument to explain how this got stabilized. So you can expect to see questions like this in the next exam. You might see totally new functional groups you've never seen before, and you're expected to see how, decide how acidic they are, and you have to use these two techniques. Look at the conjugate base and look to see whether any of them have resonance forms that will help to stabilize things. All right, so now we've explained why this is called a carboxylic acid. Uh, last term, um, I made the very witty joke that we don't call these alcoholic acids. Well, now we can see why these are not called alcoholic acids, because their conjugate base is not stabilized. Uh, and this is called an acid because it is acidic. Its conjugate is stabilized. That's why it's not good to consider this an alcohol, because it doesn't behave the same way as an alcohol. That's really the big theme of this whole term. How does resonance change things? Okay. Uh, so, one thing we have to remember about carboxylic acids is that they might lose their proton. You have to remember that carboxylic acids might lose their proton. One consequence of that is there's really, in a sense, two different forms of a carboxylic acid. The protonated form and the deprotonated form. There's really two different forms of carboxylic acids, protonated and deprotonated. So you always have to ask, which is the correct form for your final product? If your final product is a carboxylic acid, you have to ask, should I leave it in the protonated form, or should I write it in the deprotonated form? Technically, this would be called a carboxylate. 
the charged, deprotonated form of a carboxylic acid is the carboxylate. So if your final product is a carboxylic acid, you have to ask whether you should leave it as a carboxylic acid or write the final product as a deprotonated uh, carboxylate. How do you know which one to do? Well, um, suppose we were under, uh, say, um, acidic conditions. Under acidic conditions, which of these would be the final product? This one, because under acidic conditions, things hold on to their protons. And under neutral conditions, this would still be the final product. But how about under basic conditions? Under basic conditions, this would be the final product, because it takes a base to take this proton off. So under normal, neutral, uh, under neutral or acidic conditions, we would just write the neutral carboxylic acid. But if you're under basic conditions, the final product can't be a carboxylic acid. It should be a carboxylate. And very often, people lose points at the end of a problem because they forget to deprotonate the carboxylic acid. So one thing that carboxylic acids can do is lose their proton. That's part of the name. That's why they're called carboxylic acids.